And it goes the buffering and the buffering is starting. Guys, we're going to buffer like we did last time. But remember, it takes about 10 minutes and the buffering stops by the power of Jesus Christ. Pray that whatever is causing the buffer will go away in the almighty matchless name of Jesus Christ. I did? I didn't know. Really? I got banned? Who banned me? No one bans me from. I didn't even notice that. I didn't even care. Hey, then, dang. I'm losing sleep. They banned me? Hayden, you sure? <laughs> what a fat little ugly Edomite troll. Fat little ugly Edomite troll. I was getting some guy upset named Tiger. That's okay. It's probably not him. It's probably one of the mods. Who cares? That's all right. Hey, but by the way, <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah, I'm losing sleep. By the way, though. Hater Wood gave me a backhanded compliment. Good, Angie. Good job. Backhanded compliment. But I will tell you something. And I hope you you come and stock my channel, Hater Wood. Have you noticed this dude, every guy he invites, he takes up 90% of the time, takes up 90% of the conversation. And the guys, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, watch. Man, dude, Hater, dude, how much attention does a white guy need? Right? Anyway. Yeah, guys, we're waiting. It's kind of late, later than normal, right? It's for me. It's not late. No, I didn't get banned. The HC, calm down, guys. Now you're gonna. Oh, Sam and David are at war. Calm down, bro. Breathe, everyone. I want everyone. The HC, everyone, breathe. Mellow. Yes, mellow. Mellow, take it easy, guys. Take it easy. Unfortunately for me, David and I are stuck with each other. I'm stuck with him till Jesus takes me home because that's how the Lord's designed it. So I got to carry him till I die. So, Mellow. All right, we're just going to wait a few more minutes and we'll begin. <clears throat> you guys remember what movie that's from? We're just going to wait. We're going to pray, obviously. I can't do anything without asking the Lord to bless <clears throat> my voice, too. I'm not young anymore. Sam, you and David love, live close. Daily light. If I live close to David, I would turn myself into the local authorities and have them deport me back to Illinois. Are you wishing what? A death wish on me? Mellow. Mellow. Anyway, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's not late for me here at 7 o'clock, but it is 10 o'clock in New York. So I try not to go too late for people in the UK because around – good time for people UK is around like 4 o'clock my time because it's like midnight their time or earlier. So I'm trying to come at the perfect time to capture the both of all worlds and get as many people to the live streams in Jesus' name. So keep praying that God will be pleased to bless this YouTube channel, more subscribers, more likes, and more people viewing. To take this information and use it for the glory of Jesus Christ. No, yeah, they're planning. I'm going to be in the boom boom room. They're going to do at least three skits with me in the boom boom room. I'm going to play Sam Shimon versus Muhammad. I don't know why. Why Sam Shimon versus Muhammad? I have no idea. I'm going to play Halal Hogan versus Muhammad. And I'm going to play the Black Stone versus Muhammad. So the Black Stone part, because my head is shaped like a stone. So they're going to turn my head into the Black Stone. The Halal Hogan part, that I understand, but Sam Shimon versus Muhammad, why? I don't get it. Yeah, I, I don't. I wouldn't understand why, Sam. It's like because he's getting celebrities or things associated to Islam to debate Muhammad. So why would Sam Shimon debate Muhammad? I don't even know. I don't know what you posted for the last. <clears throat> yeah. Luisa, God bless you guys. Believe me, even though it's about Islam, it's still going to bless you because I'm going to tie it in with the Christian faith, with the Bible. And our goal is to expose Islam, to refute Islam, to destroy the very core of Islam because it's satanic in origin. Expose Muhammad as a false, not Messiah, as an antichrist, false prophet, a son of Satan, with the purpose 
of being used of the Holy Spirit to get Muslims saved, to see the truth, fall in love with the real Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, give their life to Jesus, their only hope of salvation, and to strengthen Christians and even non-Muslims, inoculating them from ever considering Islam. That's the goal in the almighty name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Here you have Andrew Mark. Now no, notice, Andrew Mark professes to be an atheist. But in his heart, he's going to fall in love with Jesus and come to Jesus. You remember, before his journey is over, and Andrew Martin recruits people for Christ. He tells people become Christian, and he exposes Islam. So here you have someone who doesn't claim to be a Christian doing more than many Christians and bringing people to Jesus and exposing Islam. Is that amazing or what? And by the way, two, two testimonials that I heard today on Christian Prince's channel, on Christian Prince's channel, a Muslim got saved, left Islam, and gave his life to Jesus Christ on Christian Prince's channel. And on Discord, we give God the glory. We give the Father the glory, the Lord Jesus the glory, the Holy Spirit the glory. Our brother Cloudy, who's here, God used him on Discord to answer the questions of a Muslim, him and others, praying for him, and brought him to saving faith in Jesus. A young man, one of his parents happens to be Muslim, and the other parent happens to be Christian. And so the Lord Jesus used Cloudy and the people on Discord to bring this man to Jesus Christ. That's why we do what we do. You want me there? Who's Armenian? Sargun and Uya. I'm Armenian. Khalilabu. Me? Now you should know what I am, Najir. Even your name sounds familiar. It's like you're one of the boys from the hood. It's all good in the hood. You talking to me, uh, Sergon? You asking me if I'm Armenian? Let me just, I don't know who's asking. Khalilumpu, Sergon, Diyallah, the Joe. Aziza, all this time I've been on the internet. And you still don't know I'm a Syrian, bro? That I'm an Assyrian, Aturaya? A born again Christian, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ? Whom the Lord made to be Assyrian? Aturaya, Suraya, my goodness, Sergeant, you're going to make me want to now hang myself with my shoestrings. That's it. I'm taking off my shoestrings and I'm going to hang myself. Aziza, but even your name. I know a lot of Sergeants and a lot of Enuyas. By the way, you see, Khali Olibu, Eddie, you're Assyrian too, right? By the way, just to let you know, full transparency, I'm Assyrian. Someone say, told me, when you speak to Assyrian, say Aturaya. So I'm Assyrian, Aturaya. I'm from the great city Nineveh. I'm one of the descendants of Ashur. Ashur, the son of Shem, the son of Noah. You go to Genesis 10. The Assyrians come from Ashur, the son of Shem, the son of Noah. That's our ancestor. And the Assyrians identify with the Christian faith. All glory to the triune God. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. The Assyrians, the uh, what we call Aturaya, were one of the first people in the first century that gave their life to Jesus Christ and renounced their previous way of life. And from the first century till now, the Assyrian Church of the East has served Jesus Christ and offered the Lord Jesus many martyrs for his glory. I can say that the Assyrian Church has experienced great slaughter. Many of our sons and daughters died, were killed, by Persians and, and also by Muslims because they refused to deny Jesus. They chose to die for Jesus, then deny him. This is the glorious church of my ancestors. This is the glorious church of my ancestors. And I am blessed. I am blessed and honored that the Lord Jesus would raise me from the Assyrians, right? Raise me an Aturaya. To be his salt and his light, glorifying his name by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I thank the Lord. I'm not saying being a Syrian makes you special. What I'm saying, he made you a Syrian. He made me a Syrian. He made Eddie a Syrian. But wh whoever you are, he made you what you are to be a light from that people, from that group, from that ethnic community, to be a light. Of, of the world and a salt of the earth from whatever ethnic background you're from. So if you're Greek, 
Jesus made you Greek so you can be a light shining from, from the Greeks for the glory of Jesus. Because from all tribes, all peoples, all nationalities, Jesus is raising up people to be his salt of the earth and light of the world from all these communities, all these ethnic groups, all these nations, white, black, you name it. And so the Lord said, among the Assyrians, my spirit will move to raise up soldiers for my glory and praise the trying God. And I hope I'm not boasting. My boast is in him. He was honored to say, that man from that house, he will be my soldier. And I will use him in the power of the Holy Spirit to expose Islam, destroy the lies of Muhammad, and strengthen my church, a light from Assyria, from Atur, a salt glorifying me and proclaiming my praises, the praises of Jesus Christ. And he didn't just do it for the Assyrians. He also raised up David Wood, a Caucasian. He raised up Anthony Rogers, Adam Coleman, Volcab Malone, Osama Dakdot, Dakdok, an Egyptian, Al Fadi, a Saudi Arabian, Christian prince. He raises up people from all ethnic groups to be his soldiers, glorifying his name. The name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And for you Assyrians, if you want to know what I am, yep, see, Hayden, the Lord Jesus raised up a Norwegian to denounce Thor, Odin, Loki, and worship the God of all creation, the God of gods, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the God-man, Jesus Christ. And for you Assyrians, if you want to know my particular clan, my particular clan, I am Jilu, baby. Now the Assyrians are going to get this. If you're not Assyrian, you're not going to get get the. <laughs> you're not going to get it. I am Aturaya, Assyrian, Ashuraya, son of Asher. And among the nation we call Assyria, Aturaya, you have many tribes, and in these tribes you have clans. So I'm the from the tribe of Jilu, and I'm the from the clan of Ziria, Ziria. Jilwa Atura Agamini. See? So You catch it? So the Assyrians are hearing this. See? Nashit Umrah. Nochia Agamini or Dian. Mini or Dian did Nochia. The Kashlut look connection. The Lamatran or Kasha Nochia. It look a check connection. It look passport visa at Lashmea Agamini. So you guys, if you're not know, serious, you know what I just said. The non-Assyrians will say, man, can you interpret? Okay, with that said, hopefully it will be a blessed night. Hopefully we'll get about 150, 160 for the glory of Jesus. More people. Uh-huh. They are the ones that... Sammy John. You're one of those, huh? The sophisticated Assyrians. Why, why, why? Huh? No, I used to be. I left I left purgatory. I grew up in Chicago, but I left purgatory. But I have two angels, two flowers, two roses from Jesus, from my Lord Jesus, two-fold heart, my heart from Jesus to me. My two daughters that I'm begging Jesus to bring them to me. So pray for that, please. Are you kidding me, Asenma? Man, then you have not seen or viewed my articles or my sessions. I've been doing this full-time ministry since 1999. So I have, I think, over 200 articles on my blog, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, answeringislam.net, those two sites, and these sessions. So you're in for a treat, brother. Giovanni ne Giovanna, alla notte da Giovanni. Giovanni ne Citrana, Gianna Vergine Giovanni. Ha! Okay, ready? Please, Father, bring your people. Lord Jesus, bring your people. Holy Spirit, bring your people. And bring more to listen. And use me not to <clears throat> cause them to stumble, but to be a blessing to them, to encourage them. And give them grace and patience to deal with my imperfections, Father. And transform us, Father, by the power of the Spirit to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. 
to worship you, to love you, to adore you, to obey you, to fear you, to praise you, to pray to you, and proclaim the glorious gospel of your Son, the Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord Jesus increase in us. We become more like Jesus, less like us. Save us from our flesh. Save us from the stain of the world, from the influence of Satan, Father. Wash us in the blood of the Lamb, the holy blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Holy Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Purify us and cleanse us in his blood. Purify and cleanse our loved ones, Father. In my case, my two angels, my daughters, Father. Bless, sanctify our siblings. If we have grandparents, our grandparents. If we have spouses, our spouses, our children, grand grandchildren. Whoever needs to know you, Father, to be covered by the blood of Jesus and born of the Spirit in our family members, bring them, Father, and use us to be salt of the earth and light of the world. And, Father, bless this session. Lord, bless this session. Help me to speak accurately about Islam and tie it in with the Bible, your word, your only inscripturated revelation. The Quran is a book of the devil. But even that book you can use for your glory, Father. You can use for your glory, Lord Jesus. You can use for your glory, Holy Spirit, to glorify Christ. Guide me to interpret that book accurately and to show how we can take what the Quran says and use it to bring Muslims to the true Jesus, the historical Jesus, who is the Christ of the New Testament. Use me, Father. Save me from error and stammering to recall these passages, interpret them correctly, and bless your people, Father, with wisdom and knowledge and insight from your spirit. Fill them with your spirit and transform us to become more like Jesus Christ. And bless the connection, Father. We need you. Everything good, everything beneficial, everything that helps us fall more in love with you, become more like Jesus, and walk more closely with the Spirit is from your grace. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. All right. Is it clear, my connection? Everyone can see? Yeah, refresh the screen, hit the like button. Really? 155 people here, Thomas. Are you sure? I only see six to 70. But I pray we get about 200. Thomas, good to see you, brother. Thank the Lord for the grace in your heart that you can tolerate me when I'm tough with you. Consider it a spiritual father or a teacher that sometimes brings out the ruler, even though it's politically incorrect. All right. Let me give you some articles for the session. Okay. Let me give you some articles for the session. Okay. I just posted this yesterday, and I'm going to do a session on this. Okay, here you go. Please click on the link, save the article, study the information, use it to glorify Jesus Christ. You have my permission. Upload these articles to your your websites, these videos to your YouTube channels. Disseminate them for the glory of Jesus Christ. Just keep the name of the article and the name of the author intact, right? For the glory of our God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And freely receive, freely you should you shall give. Okay, now that's the link. Okay. That's one article where, again, I show how Muhammad indirectly proved Jesus is God. Muhammad taught certain things about his God that end up proving Jesus claimed to be God. And I'll do a session on this. But for the meantime, you can read that article. All right. You can read that article. Now, let me give you some more articles that will help you understand why I titled this session, The Muslim Jesus. The Muslim Jesus. And the true Shahada, the real Shahada. Save this article. Now, in that article, I'm going to post it twice again. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. In that article, the one I just gave you, the second one, there are links to other articles that you must read. Okay. Are you ready now to expose Islam, expose Muhammad as a false prophet, and use even his testimony to glorify the true God and his true word, the Holy Bible? Are you ready? Renee, good to see you, sister. Hopefully, we see more of you. We see more of everyone else, the regulars, you know, Joanna, everyone else, <clears throat> bring them all. Come in Jesus' name. All right. Okay. <clears throat> what is the Shahada? <clears throat> shahada is a term used in Sunni Islam as well as Shia Islam. <clears throat> okay. The Shahada is, is the term used by Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims. That refers to testifying. Shahada means to testify, 
to bear witness, to give witness, to give testimony. Are you with me here? Okay. Shahada means to testify, to bear witness, to give witness, to give a testimony. Now, Islam has, Sunni Islam, let me be precise, and I trust the Holy Spirit to guide me and save me from error in Jesus' name, that he'll guide me to speak truth even when talking about Islam and save me from mistakes. Okay, now, Islam, in the Sunni Islam, when I say Islam, note I'm talking about Sunni Islam, not Shia Islam, not Qurani, Quran only Muslim. So understand, I'm using Islam to mean Sunni Islam. So just keep that in mind, Sunni Islam. Sunni Islam, there are articles of faith that a Muslim must believe. And there are pillars that a Muslim must do. Iman, faith, creed. Islam, pillars, practices they must perform and do. Everyone with me there? Everyone with me there? So the first pillar in Islam is the shahada. The kalima. What does that mean? If you want to be a Sunni Muslim, the first pillar of Sunni Islam. Remember, I'm using Islam, Sunni Islam interchangeably. If you want to be a Sunni Muslim, you have to verbally confess in front of at least two witnesses. You must say, I bear witness. There is no deity worthy of worship. I bear witness. There is no God, but Allah. La ilaha, no ilah, illallah. Okay. Then you must say, and may the Lord Jesus destroy this confession. May the Lord Jesus blot out this confession. May the blood of Jesus wash us and the Holy Spirit seal our mouths to not confess this for the sake <clears throat> of it being legitimate, but to confess it, to expose it and destroy it for the glory of Jesus in Jesus' name. Okay. And then you, you say, I bear witness that Muhammad is a messenger. Now, that's what the Muslims will tell you. Are you with me there? The Muslims, the Sunni Muslims will tell you that's a shahada. In the article I gave you, the second article I gave you, it actually shows you that's not completely true. The, the Sunni Muslims either are ignorant or dishonest and deceitful. Because according to the Sunni tradition, according to the statements attributed to Muhammad, the Shahada is more than that. Are you, are you now ready, ready for the real Shahada and how it ends up proving Jesus is God? How the Shahada of Islam proves Jesus is God and the, the God of Muhammad. You guys ready? Because this is all warm up. I'm trying to get you ready. All right. Who's ready? So in that article, let me tell you what the true shahada is. Okay. In that article, let me show you what the true shahada is. This comes from the most authentic collection of narrations called Ahadith in Sunni Islam. It comes from Bukhari. It comes from Muslim. Okay. Let me read it for you. This comes from Aisha Buley's English translation, English translation titled The Sahih Collection of Al-Bukhari. And I give you the link. You can read it. So notice she quotes chapter 4, verse 171 of the Quran. We'll get back to chapter 4, verse 171. I will revisit chapter 4, verse 171 in a minute. But I want you to see the narration attributed to Muhammad. Because we're going to have fun now. Now we're going to have fun. Abu Ubaid said that his word, refer referring to Jesus, is B, and it is. Someone else said that a spirit from him means that he gave him life and gave him a spirit. Say not three about Allah. Now watch. It is related from Ubada. And by the way, text me first last if I'm buffering because I'm reading the article now. It is related from Ubada that the prophet said, whoever testifies that there is no God but Allah alone with no partner. Here's the confession, the shahada, the kalima. If you testify, there is no God but Allah. La ilaha illallah. With no partner, la sharika lahu. And that Muhammad is the slave, abduhu, rasuluhu, and his messenger. But now here's the other part. And that Jesus, Isa, is Abdullah, slave of Allah, and his messenger, rasuluhu, his messenger, 
And a word, a word which he cast into Mary and a spirit from him. And that the garden is real and the fire is real will enter the garden, whatever his actions. It is related from Junada that he added, and he can enter by whichever of the eight doors of the garden he wishes. Let that sink in for a minute. Let that sink in for a minute. Yep, Pedro, you got it. The real Shahada, according to the Hadith, includes confessing Jesus is the apostle of God, the slave of God, God's word, which he cast down into Mary, and a spirit that came from him. You must confess that in order to be a true Sunni Muslim. Let it sink in for a minute. Because we're going to unpack the implication and the significance of this. And you must also believe paradise is real and hell is real. When's the last time you heard a Muslim telling you that's a real shahada? When's the last time you heard a Sunni say, this is the shahada? We must confess not just Muhammad is Allah's slave and Allah's messenger, but Jesus is Allah's slave, Allah's apostle, his messenger, and Allah's word that he cast into Mary and a spirit from Allah. And that paradise is real and hell is real. In other words, many Muslims have never said the real shahada. Right? Okay. But it's not an isolated narration. Let me read some more. Let me read some more. Are you ready? This comes from Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. And it's there, the link, everything. Book one, number 0043. Why didn't I give a link here? Anyway. Again, it's the same narrator. It is narrated on the authority of Ubada bin Samit, that the messenger of Allah. Yeah, I got to go back and correct this article. I don't like when it says, may peace be upon him. May the wrath of Jesus be on him, and it is, for misleading people to help. The messenger of Allah observed, he who said, here it is, he who said, there is no God but Allah, la ilaha illallah, he is one. Wahda, wahdahu, right? One, wahid. And there is no associate with him, la sharika lahu, that Muhammad is his servant, Ab abduhu, and his messenger, rasuluhu, that Christ is the servant and the son of, of a slave girl, and he, Christ, is his word, which he communicated to Mary, kalimatuhu, alqaha, illa Maryam, and his spirit, ruhu, that paradise is a fact, and hell is a fact, Allah would make him, he who affirms these truths, enter paradise through any one of its eight doors, which he would like. Did you catch it? No, Pedro. That's not the reason why they reject the Tisha. They have their other reasons. Did you catch it? That's why I said save my articles, study them, and use them for the glory of the triune God. You caught it, right? Let me do something here real quick. One second. I'm going to read one more narration, and we're going to unpack it and tie it in with the Bible. Guys, we're going to feast tonight. Invite people. We're going to feast tonight. In Jesus' name, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Bless this connection, Father. In Jesus' name. It's going to buffer. Don't panic. The buffering in Jesus' name will go away in Jesus' name. We're going to feast tonight. We're going to have a feast. So invite people to the feast for the glory of Jesus. Okay, now. Let me do this. Hold on. Let me read the other one. Are you ready for the other one? This comes from Riyad as salihin Riyad as salihin And it's quoting Bukhari Muslim. Okay? Now watch this. Final one. And in the article, I bring out the implication. I bring out the implication. Okay. I'm going to show you that Muhammad confirmed what's called Yohanin Yoh Christology. I'll explain that in a minute. Muhammad in his ignorance, Satan thinking he was wise, moving Muhammad to confirm what's known as Yohanin Yoh 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 Christology. Fancy terms. That, that scholars came up with to sound intelligent. And I'll break it down for you in a minute. Let me read this narration. Riyad al salihin the book of Miscellany. Again, the same narrator, Ubada bin As-Samit reported. Messenger of Allah said, he who bears witness that there is no true God except Allah, alone, having no partner, la sharika lahu, with him, and that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger, 
that Isa, Jesus, is a slave and messenger, and he is his word, which he communicated to Maryam, and his spirit, which he sent into her, that Jannah, paradise is true and hell is true, Allah will make him enter Jannah accepting whatever deeds he accomplished. This I got to post for you. Let me post it. Oops, sorry. Okay, watch here. Let me post it. Okay, let me post it again. I'll post it twice. Okay. I want you to understand it. So now I'm going to bring out the implication. Here's the implication of what you just read. Hope I have been put you to sleep. We got to go slow because this is education. We're being taught, educated, not just entertained. I don't want to bore you, but I don't want to just entertain you either. Okay. Let me read that part again to bring out the implication. If you testify, you believe, you confess, you bear witness, Jesus is his word, which he communicated to Maryam, and his spirit, which he sent to her. Notice, sent to her. Jesus was a spirit sent to her that Jannah, paradise is true and hell is true. Allah will make him enter Jannah accepting whatever deeds he accomplished. Let me let you in on a little secret that Sunni Muslims don't like to tell you. Do you know, according to the Hadiths, according to the narrations, Muhammad said, if you make this confession, if you testify and bear witness, there is no God but Allah, you are guaranteed paradise no matter what you've done and how you lived. And then the person tells Muhammad, even if a person has committed zinna, sexual morality and theft, Muhammad said yes, even if he's done that. The guy was shocked. He asked it again. Even if he's committed sexual morality and theft, and Muhammad said yes, and he asked it a third time, even, he goes yes, to your chagrin. In other words, it is Islam that teaches easy believism. Islam says, if you say that confession, you could have lived like a rotten pig, scoundrel, a whoremonger, right? Murdered people, an alcoholic, a thief, a womanizer. But if you die confessing from your heart, there's no God but Allah, you will enter paradise. Exactly, Raz, you took the words out of my mouth. That's the last part of the uh, here here you didn't you didn't catch it. Allah will make him enter Jannah accepting whatever deeds he accomplished. Did you catch it? No matter what he did, Allah will bring him into Jannah. No matter what he did, if he says this and he means it, he's going to Jannah. So it's not Christianity that promotes easy believism, immorality and using Christ's grace as a license to sin. Muhammad taught that, not Jesus. Muhammad taught that, not Paul. You want me there? Exactly, sample. And remind me before I end this session to give you an article where I wrote an article showing Islam teaches sola fide, meaning that you're saved solely by the grace of Allah through faith, no matter what you do. Remind me to give you that article before I'm done. So now are you ready for us to unpack this? Are you ready for us? To unpack this. Ready for me to unpack this. Now where are these hadiths getting all this information from? That you have to say that Jesus is the slave of Allah. The messenger apostle of Allah. The word of Allah which he cast down to Mary. And a spirit from him. Well, my Shabuli gave you the passage. But we're going to look at it here. And thank the Mahats for helping me to help you. All right. Can you brethren post chapter... Chapter 4, verse 171 of the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 171 of the Quran. And I hope the newbies are here. I don't know if Luis is here. I hope she is. God bless her. Bless all of you and your families. Keep us safe and keep my daughter safe who I miss. Chapter 4, verse 171 of the Quran. Watch here. 4, 171. <clears throat> o people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion, nor utter aught concerning Allah, save the truth. Now notice the names. Given to Jesus. Now remember, this is a false Jesus. It's a satanic counterfeit. But still, Satan had Muhammad say enough things about this false Jesus that you can use to bring to the true Jesus. You can use to bring to the true Jesus. Okay? Now, what does he say? He's the Messiah. Asa, even though that's not his Arabic name, still, 
son of Mary, Maryam, his mother is Mary, only a messenger of Allah, Rasul Allah, and the word Rasul can also mean, can also mean apostle, and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him. So notice, Jesus is the Messiah, the servant slave of God, Allah, <clears throat> an apostle of God, Allah, the son of Mary. Why is he called son of Mary? Because he has no human father. He was conceived and born from a virgin, the Virgin Mary. He's Allah's word, God's word, which came down to Mary, and he is the spirit that came from Allah. Okay? So believe in Allah and his messengers and say not three. Seize, it is better for you. Allah's only one Allah far is removed from his transcendent majesty that he should have a son. His is all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. And Allah is sufficient as defender. Everything Muhammad said here about Jesus being the Messiah, servant of Allah. In this case, we'll say God. Because all of the Quran is not the true God. All of the Quran is not the true God. Put that aside. The Messiah, the servant of God, slave of God, the apostle of God, God's word which came down into Mary, the spirit from God, the New Testament says, amen. The New Testament agrees. Can I show you where the New Testament agrees with all these titles, all these names attributed to Jesus? Right? Can I show you that? Let's go to John 4, 25 to 26. John 4, 25, 26. So I said, I'm going to bring it back to the Bible and teach you and give you me by the grace of God. John 4, 25 to 26. Okay. John 4, 25 to 26. Let's read it. All right. Let's read it. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. Whenever that one comes, he will declare all things to us openly. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking to you. So Jesus agrees he's the Messiah, Mashiach, the Christ. Okay, let's go now to Matthew 16, 15 and 16. Matthew 15, 16, 15 and 16. Matthew 16, 15 and 16. Let's read it. Okay. He said to them, you though, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Not only the Christ, but you're also the son of the living God. The Christ, the son of the living God. Interesting. Did Jesus say, shut up, Peter. Don't call me son of God. Shame on you. Matthew 16, 17. Let's see what our Lord says. Matthew 16, 17. Watch here. Matthew 16, 17. I hope you guys are being blessed. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. You are blessed in making that confession, Simon, because that's who I am. And be blessed to know my Father, God, I'm his son, he's my Father, he revealed to you my true identity. How blessed you are to know my true identity, because that means my Father revealed it to you. My father graced you with the honor of knowing my true identity. Right? Everyone got it? Because you guys like silent. I don't know if I lost you or like shocked. Are you shocked? Are you? I don't know. Remember, I'm here to serve you. If it's too much, I can shut down. I won't, I won't be offended. Okay, so you see that, right? All right. So let's look at other references. Let's go to Mark 14, 61 to 62. Mark 14, 61 to 62. Let's go there. All right. Mark 14, 61 to 62. And thank the mod for helping me to help you. Watch here. So I want you guys to follow with me. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, thy priest asked him and said unto him, Now thy priest asking Jesus, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Are you the Christ, Son of the Blessed? Notice the connection with, are you the Christ, son of the blessed? 
to be the Christ is to be the son of the blessed, the son of God. Now, Jesus says, a good Muslim said, Istaghfirullah Rabbil Alameen. Right? Haram alayk. How could you say that? No, look what Jesus said. And Jesus said, I am. You are right. I am the Christ, the son of the blessed. And you shall see the son of man, me, sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Hmm. Go to John 11. John 11, 25 to 27. John 11, 25 to 27, folks. Let's see. So far, the New Testament teaches Jesus is the Christ, but he's not just the Christ. As the Christ, he's the son of God, which the Quran denies. Now notice the dilemma of Muhammad. Muhammad said he's the Christ, but he didn't realize to say he's the Christ means he has to be God's son. To be the Christ is to be God's son. You can't have one without the other, Muhammad. But John 11, 25 to 27. Okay. Jesus said unto her, because Ariel Gonzalez, if you pay attention to Luke, he's not recording the trial at night. That's why it's different. Did you have you read it carefully? Because now you inter interjected about Luke. That conversation was in the morning. Mark is recording the trial at night when Jesus answered. But then it says in the morning, they brought him again. And just to make sure, they asked him again to confirm that's what he was claiming to be. Reread it. It's Luke 22, 66 to 71. That wasn't the same trial at night, Ariel Gonzalez. Mark is recording the trial at night. Luke is mentioning what happened in the morning before he's handed off to be crucified. Luke 22, 66 to 71. Okay, now, John 11, 25, 27. Good point, though. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection of life. I, me personally, am the resurrection of life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe what I just said? She saith unto him, Martha saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God. You notice how being the Christ is tied in with him being the Son of God? If you're the Christ, you're the Son of God. They're connected. You can't have one with the, the other. But Muhammad thought you could have one without the other. Well, wait, Muhammad. You admit Jesus is the Christ. Do you know that in admitting that, you admit he's the Son of God? Because, Muhammad, you can't have one without the other. So thank you for exposing yourself as the Antichrist. Right? Thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. You see what Muhammad did to himself? Muhammad agrees he's the Christ. But he says he's not the son of God. And God's true word says, no, you can't have one with the other. Muhammad, you just buried yourself and exposed you're an antichrist because you admit Jesus is the Christ. But if he's the Christ, then he's God's son. See what you did, Muhammad? You see what you did, Muhammad? You see what Satan did to Muhammad? Satan did through Muhammad. Satan had Muhammad <clears throat> confirm Jesus is the Messiah. But Satan didn't realize that God Almighty, who's sovereign over Satan, who, who is a creature, a flea, crushed underneath the feet of Jesus, a dog on Jesus' leash, and were covered by the blood of Jesus against him. He didn't know that God would then use that to bring them to the truth. You got it? See what he did? Now, so the crowd agrees he's the Messiah. And the Bible says, amen. But notice Muhammad said Jesus is the slave servant of God. Slave servant of God. Does the New Testament agree with that? Yes. Notice I'm doing two things at one time. Teaching you what the Bible says about Jesus and showing you titles in the Quran that you can use in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring Muslims to the true Jesus and reject Muhammad. Are you seeing, you seeing what I'm doing here, right? You see what I'm doing. I'm not just exposing the Quran. I'm using what the Quran says to bring you to the New Testament, God's true revelation, to be used to convict Muslims of the true Jesus. So learn these points. Okay. Does the Bible agree Jesus is the slave of God? Yes. Matthew 12, 
Matthew 12, 17 to 18. Yeah, chapter 4, verse 170 on DHC. If you, you've been here from the beginning, you should have paid attention to that, my friend. Don't get distracted because you should have heard it because I read the verse. And it's in my article. Get my article, DHC, because I want you to use it. Matthew 12, 17, 18. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias. Oh, wow. Guys, he's a son of Adam. He did what Adam did. He blamed the woman that God gave him. What a sinner, bro. You are just like your ancestor, Adam. Yeah, the wife that God gave me distracted me. My goodness. Wow. I hope you don't have a garden snake in your house because I don't want your wife to say, yeah, but the garden snake, he made me do it. Then we'd really be reliving Genesis 3. Okay, Matthew 12, 17, 18. Let's read it. Okay, Matthew 12, 17, 18. Don't blame it on no snake now. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. So, folks, did you see God the Father calls Jesus his son, my servant? God the Father calls Jesus his son, my servant? He's my son who became my servant. He's my son who became my slave. Do you guys see that? So does the Bible confirm that Jesus is the Messiah and the slave of God? So far, we have no objection. All right, Muhammad, what's to object? Everything you say, it's, we agree with. But what about the part that says a messenger of God? The Arabic word Rasul can also mean apostle. Apostle. Is Jesus an apostle of God? Now, for those of you who know this, don't chime in because I know Protestant, first, last. You've been with me. You've studied this. You know this. For the newbies who was hearing this for the first time, is Jesus called the apostle of God? Is the word apostle applied to Jesus? Yes or no? Because the Quran says he's an apostle. Don't answer if you know the answer. If you've been doing this for a while, you've studied. Okay? I want to give the newbies a chance to think. Is he called an apostle? So Thomas, he said, no, okay. How many agree? Because that means that would be a point of disagreement with the Quran. The Quran says he's an apostle of God, and you're saying no. So that's a point of disagreement. Two no's. All right. Anyone else? Michaela says yes. All right. Anyone else? Okay, Cruz says no. All right. Anyone else? I'll take a few more. I'll take a few more. All right. Sajet says, I don't know. Hebrews 3, verse 1. Hebrews 3, verse 1. Crap says no. Hebrews 3, verse 1, folks. See, now you see you're learning your faith. Good, Lisa. See, this session it will also help you learn your faith and reinforce you in your faith. Hebrews 3, verse 1. Before the rapture, Protestant, we're going to leave you behind. Good job. That's the why these sessions are here. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. He is an apostle. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. There you go. See, you're learning and you are reinforcing what you already know. If you already know this, it reinforces it. If you don't, you're learning. So don't see the title, ah, oh, it's about Islam. I don't want to join. No, you're going to learn about your faith, not just about Islam. Hebrews 3 verse 1. Praise our triumph God for raising up teachers, raising up preachers, raising up apologists, and filling them with wisdom and knowledge to know the word and proclaim it so we can know our God and know his word and live it for his glory. There it goes. You see it? Give, let, yep, that's a good question. Apostolos. 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 Greek. Hebrew shaliach. You know what it means? It means to be sent out, a sent out one. Someone sent out to speak on behalf of someone. Someone sent out to represent another. Someone sent out to speak on behalf of another. That's what it means. So is Jesus an apostle? 
Did the Father send him out from heaven, from his presence, to speak on the Father's behalf, to represent the Father? So he is the apostle par excellence. He is the perfect apostle, the perfect prophet, the perfect high priest, the perfect king, the perfect Messiah. All other apostles do not compare to this apostle. All other prophets fall short of this prophet. All other priests fall short of this one. In other words, in Jesus... Jesus sums up all these offices, all these fun functions in himself perfectly and completely. He is all these offices, all these functions, all these positions. He, he assumes them in himself and perfects them and completes them. You see how amazing Jesus is? God bless you, Sean. Thank you. In other words, no one category, right? can fit Jesus completely. You cannot put Jesus in a box. All these categories, all these functions are still not enough to contain his majesty. He assumes all of them and he's still infinitely more. You get it? You understand what the New Testament is saying? All of these functions, all of these categories, all of these roles, he assumes and he's the only one who assumes them perfectly, flawlessly. And yet he's still too much for these categories. They're not enough to contain him. Who's not getting it? I just want to make sure you're getting it. Are you getting it? Before I move on to the next point. So, does the Bible agree with the Quran? Jesus is an apostle of God. Jesus is a servant of God. He's a Messiah. Of course it does. Now, what did I say the word apostolos, apostolos means? To be sent out. To be sent out by another to represent him, to speak on his behalf as his messenger. Now, let me show you Jesus claiming to be an apostle. John 17, 18. John 17, 18. John 17, 18. Watch here. As thou hast sent me into the world, Father, as you sent me, that's an apostle, into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. You sent me in the world to represent you. I send them in the world to represent me. You catch it there? But you didn't catch it fully. You see what Jesus said? I was sent into the world, and I send you, my apostles, in the world. That's why you're my apostles. Sent out ones, sent out by me on my behalf to represent me, as the Father sent me out from his presence to speak on his behalf. But you didn't catch it, though. You didn't catch the meat of John 17, 18. I don't, yeah, see, Sajad caught it. Sajad caught it. Jesus is doing to and through the apostles, what God did to and through Jesus. In other words, Jesus is assuming the role that God assumes by being the one who sends out apostles while he's in heaven, a work of God. It is God in heaven who sends apostles on earth to represent him. And Jesus says, that's what I do. As he sent me, I send you. Yep, you are too. Sort of truth. You are lowercase a apostle. You're not apostle like them, but you are a lowercase apostle in that when you go out in the power of the Spirit to represent Jesus, you're an apostle of Jesus in that sense. Lowercase a. You are not an apostle like Peter who saw Jesus and was given revelation from the Holy Spirit to write down for God to preserve as the foundation of our faith. That authority you don't have. Let me show you again Jesus doing in heaven. Please, my God. Please, Lord. Please, my God. Sorry. In Jesus' name. All right. Okay. Matthew 23, 34. Matthew 23, 34. Again, here's proof that Jesus is God. 
Jesus does in heaven what only God does. What does God do in heaven? He sends angels. What does God do in heaven? He sends human apostles that he commissions on earth. What does God do in heaven? He sends human prophets that he commissions. But now notice what Jesus says. Just the wretch. Did you hear what I said correctly? Are you going to make a mountain out of a molehill so I can get rid of you and get you out of my channel? Matthew 23, 34. Wherefore, behold, I sent, un I sent unto you prophets. You see what Jesus said? I will send you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Hold on, Jesus. You're going to send prophets while you're in heaven to the Jews on earth? But wait, God sends prophets. It is God in heaven who sends prophets on earth, human prophets, that he raises up. God is the one who sends angels from heaven. God is the one who raises up apostles on earth and sends out. How come you're doing what God does? And you're doing it in heaven where God is. Are you getting it? So if you ask a Muslim, guys, ask a Muslim. Yep, exactly, Revelation. Ask a Muslim. Who raises up prophets and sends them on the earth? They'll say Allah. Who raises up messengers and sends them on the earth? Allah. Who sends angels to the earth to talk to messengers and give them revelation? Allah. Thank you for proving that Jesus claimed to be God. Because Jesus says, I send apostles, I send prophets, and he does something else. He does something else. Are you ready? You see how many birds I'm killing with one stone? The Bible stone, the rock, the impenetrable, everlasting rock. How many stones I'm killing? Refuting Islam. Proving Jesus is God. And affirming the supernatural origin of the Bible. Now watch here. Revelation 22, verse 6. Revelation 22, verse 6. Pun intended, yes. It's not the black stone that they smooch either. Revelation 22, verse 6. Watch here. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel. So God Almighty sends his angel unto his servants the things which must surely be done. Guys, please etch this verse and remember it and recite it from memory. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent an angel, a spirit creature, to his servants on earth to give them the revelation. Who did that? The Lord God. But wait. Less than 10 verses later, Revelation 22, 16. Wait, less than 10 verses later. Wait, less than 10 verses later. Rebuke the buffering, Lord Jesus. Less than 10 verses later, in the same chapter, notice what Jesus says. Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I'm the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. I'm really confused. Jesus is in heaven. Jesus says, I am the one who sent my angel. This is my angel who belongs to me in heaven. I sent him to speak to you and give you these words for the churches. What? Do you see the pattern here? Let it sink in, folks. Jesus in heaven sends angels in heaven that belong to him. Jesus in heaven raises up prophets and sends them. Jesus in heaven raises up apostles and sends them. Who does Jesus think he is? And these are the words of Jesus. Jesus is speaking. I will send you prophets. Just you sent me, Father, into the world. I send them in the world. I sent my angel to you. Who do you think you are, Jesus? And he's doing it in heaven, the last place that God needs an agent to represent him in heaven. Having an agent on earth to represent him is okay. In heaven, God needs an agent in heaven next to him to represent him? That makes absolutely no sense. Jesus can only be doing this if he is God, different from the Father in person, but one with him in essence. Thank you, samples. Everyone getting it? All right. Now, with that said, so far the Bible says, yes, Muhammad, Jesus is the Messiah. Slave of God, apostle of God. He is the son of Mary. Yes, Muhammad, he's the son of Mary. But then it says, 
He's a spirit from him, right? It says Jesus is a spirit from him. Now, does the Bible call Jesus a spirit? Does the Bible say Jesus is a spirit? Not that Jesus has authority to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is united to him and the Father, but is Jesus himself a spirit? Is Jesus himself a spirit? Thank you, Rebel Mark. Does the Bible say Jesus is a spirit? 1 Corinthians 15, 45. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Watch here. Pedro, here's your answer. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Here's your answer. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam, Jesus, is a life-giving spirit. Wow, Muhammad, you got a lot right. Jesus is a spirit who gives life, who came from God. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the son of Mary. Jesus is the apostle of God. And Jesus is the servant, slave of God. Man, you got so much right. Now, what kind of spirit is Jesus? What kind of spirit is he here? Quickening is the old English way of saying life-giving spirit. That's why if you look at the NIV or ESV, a New King James Version, so people don't know what quickening means, it means to awakening, alive, a life-giving spirit. Let's look at another translation. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew, I know you're going to have fun with this. What kind of spirit is he? A life-giving spirit. Now watch. Let's look at another translation real quickly. Okay. Amen, Pedro. That's why I tell you guys, focus. So also it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. So what kind of spirit is Jesus? A life-giving spirit. Folks, here is... A problem. The only spirit that gives life is God. The Father's spirit, he gives life. The Holy Spirit, he is spirit, he gives life. For Jesus to be a life-giving spirit, he must be God. You catch it? Now, the Quran says Jesus is a spirit from Allah. Does the Quran agree Jesus is a life-giving spirit? Does the Quran agree Jesus is a life-giving spirit? Oh, yeah. Chapter 3, verse 49. Wow, Muhammad, what are you doing to yourself? I thought you're trying to refute the Trinity. You end up proving the Trinity and exposing yourself as a son of Satan, Muhammad. Chapter 3, verse 49. Watch here. Chapter 3, verse 49. Pictal is not the best translation. Can you get Arbery? Pictal does not translate the verb correctly. He does not translate the verb khalaqa. Correctly, correctly. One of the names of Allah, Al Khaliq. Watch here. And a messenger to the children of Israel, indeed, I came to you with a sign from your Lord. I create for you, Jesus is supposedly speaking. I create for you the figure of a bird from the, the tin clay. Ah, Osama Dakdok. So I breathe into it, so it become a bird by Allah's permission. And I heal the blind and the leper, and I raise the dead by Allah's permission. And I inform you about what you eat and what you store in your houses. Surely, and this is a sign for you if you are believers. Now, I don't like the fact that Usama transliterated the Arabic teen or tin, because people don't know we don't have the footnote. Here, let's read another translation. To be a messenger to the children of Israel saying, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. This is Jesus supposedly speaking, guys. I, Jesus, will create for you out of clay as the likeness of a bird from clay. Then I will breathe into it and it will be a bird. By the leaf, be it of Allah. I will also heal the blind and the leper and bring life to the dead by the leaf of Allah. God, wait, wait, wait. Muhammad, you're saying God permitted Jesus? To give life to the dead, raise the dead, yes. God permitted Jesus to fashion a bird from clay and then breathe into it and becomes a living bird, animates it, yes. 
So you're saying Jesus is a life-giving spirit, Muhammad, that became flesh? Oops. 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 Did you catch it? Okay, now, folks, let me break down the implication of what you just read. Number one, the verb create is never used for anyone other than Allah and Jesus. The verb create, Lord Jesus, rebuke the buffering, please, God. Pay attention. Number one, pay attention. This verb for create is never used for anyone other than God and Jesus. The verb create is only used for God and Jesus in the Quran. That's number one. Number two, the only ones who raise the dead, give life to the dead in the Quran is Allah and Jesus. Only Allah, supposedly God and Jesus, raise the dead in the Quran, give life to the dead. No one else. The only two figures in the Quran that give life to the dead and create from clay and animate it, Allah and Jesus, no one else. So you ask a Muslim, can you show me in the Quran where some other one besides Allah raises the dead, gives life to the dead? They'll say no. Can you show me in the Quran where someone other than Allah is said to create the Arabic verb khalaqa, create? That they'll say no. You'll say yes, Jesus. In fact, you know what's astonishing? Jesus created the bird and made it alive in the exact same way Allah created Adam and made him alive. The Quran says Allah created Adam from clay, breathed his spirit in Adam, and Adam came to life. Chapter 15 of the Quran, verses 28 to 29. Chapter 15, 15 of the Quran, 28 to 29. Exactly steadfast. Watch here. Watch what happens. We're waiting. How are you doing? Hey, what's up? What's up, sister? Keep listening. We're waiting, guys. Hold on. I don't know. First, last stepped away. So, Protestant, you got to pick it up, bro. You stepped away. You said, I'm, I'll be back. Be right back. Come on, brethren. I don't pay you nothing for nothing. We got to be faster. <laughs> Thank you, Nada. God bless you, sister. Oh, these mods, I got to fire them and stop paying them. But anyway, there's a stimulus package. Okay. And when your Lord said to the angel, surely I am creating a human from dry mud, from black molded mud. So when I have fashioned him and breathed into him from my spirit, so fall down worshiping him. Can you give me the arbor? You can't give me the arbor, right? Because I like Usama Dakdok, but not too much. Not too much because, you know. Anyway, ah, uh, Osama. Osama, 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 you are the one. Let me see. Let's see if we can get. Let's see if we can get. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that. Sorry. Can we get. Can we get. Uh, hold on. Let's see if we can get it. Hold on, buddy. Guys, there. I'm trying. That's what, first and last. Of, all the time he can leave, he leaves now. Dude, I want to bust his face, but you know I can't because then, you know. Come on. All right, guys, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. I guess. Wait, guys. Let me find him. <laughs> now you're gonna see why Protestant. I know you love Osama, but don't burn candles to his Quran. Candlesticks to his Quran translation, because here I'm gonna show you why. Okay. Here you're gonna see why I don't want you to burn candles, right? Because here you go, why I needed this translation. But you know, Osama, I gotta stick with Osama. No, no. All right, here you go. Okay. And when thy Lord said to the angel, See, I am creating a mortal of a clay of mud molded. It's not just mud, it says clay, right? Clay. All right, brother. 
بشاره من سلسلة من همين همين الله رسنا كبار. So I wanted the word clay now here, and when I have shaped him and breathed into him of my spirit, then you bow down to him. Okay, guys, let me ask you a question. Jesus creates from clay a bird, breathes into it, and it comes to life. He animates it, meaning Jesus has the breath of life. He can breathe life into dead things, inanimate things. Allah creates Adam from mud and clay and breathes into Adam, and Adam comes to life. So you're trying to now convince me that the Quran does not teach Jesus is a life-giving spirit, just like Paul taught in 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Paul said Jesus is a life-giving spirit, a divine spirit, a divine person who is spirit by nature that became flesh that gives life. How does the Quran differ with that? The Quran said Jesus came as a spirit from Allah, entered Mary, became flesh, and breathed life into dead things and inanimate, inanimate things and brought them into being, made them alive. <clears throat> and you're trying to tell me the Quran denies that Jesus is a life-giving spirit. You guys got it or no? Before I move on to the next point, everyone got this point far? So what exactly are we exaggerating according to chapter 4, verse 171? Chapter 4, verse 171 says, stop exaggerating in your religion. Where exactly are we exaggerating? Where exactly are we going beyond the limits of our religion when you pretty much confirm Jesus is God? You pretty much confirm Jesus is God. You're saying he's a spirit from him. He's a word that came down to Mary. He's the apostle of God, the slave of God, the Messiah. Amen. Muhammad, where's the disagreement? But I'm now, let me unpack it a little further. Let me unpack it a little, a little further. Chapter 4, verse 171 again. This time, it doesn't matter, the translation. Let's unpack it a little further. Okay. Watch here. 4, 171. Here's where I'm going to need you to really pay attention. Right? Watch what happens. Oh, yeah, I know. Sorry about that. Hold on, guys. Oh, distractions, distractions. Sorry about that. Okay. Or 171, let's read. Oh, people of the book, do not exaggerate in your religion and do not speak against Allah except the truth. Surely the Christ, Asa, son of Mary, is only a messenger of Allah and his word, which he cast down to Mary and a spirit from him. Now, let me unpack what that means. You see the Quran says, and his word, which he cast down to Mary. Okay. You don't need to know Arabic. You just need to read that carefully. But those who speak Arabic will confirm. Those who speak Arabic will confirm. The word is kalimatuhu, his word, the word of Allah, the word of Allah, al-qaha, al-qaha, meaning set down, cast down, illa maryam. Folks, remember, I only have a GED, I'm not that smart. I'm almost as illiterate as Muhammad was. <clears throat> when you tell me something was cast down onto something, doesn't, doesn't that prove whatever that thing was? It was up above before it came down. It must be up above before it came down. For example, I'm on top of the roof, and, and I cast down my iPhone to you. Doesn't that mean my iPhone had to be up there with me on the roof? It had to be there existing with me on the roof before I sent it down to you? I go, here, here's my iPhone. Right? 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 In Jesus' name, rebuke the buffering Lord. Right? If I say, hey, you down there, Thomas, you, I'm going to cast down my iPhone to you. Get it. Grab it. Got it. I can't cast something down that's not up there with me to cast down. Okay? Are you with me there? Please, Father. Please, my God. Wow, so we bless the connection. Are you with me there? 
I want to make sure you're getting it. It's buffering on me, man. I'm getting angry. But wait, it says Jesus is the word that came down. Folks, if Jesus is the word that came down, that means Jesus was up there as the word before he came down. Okay, now the second point. The second point, it says he came as a spirit from him. Spirit from him. So wait. Since Jesus only became flesh from Mary, that means if he was already there up above with God before he came out of Mary's womb and he took flesh from Mary's womb, that means when he was up there, he wasn't flesh because the flesh he took from Mary. So what would he have been up there before he came down? He would have been spirit. That's exactly what the Quran says. Jesus was God's word who came down from God as spirit to become flesh. That's John 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. And Paul says that word was a light-giving spirit who became flesh. So Muhammad confirms Yohanine Christology. Remember I said I was going to mention that word? Yohanine Christology means John's teaching on Jesus as the eternal word. John's teaching on Jesus as the eternal word. Muhammad agreed with John. He goes, John, I agree with you. Jesus is that word with God who existed as spirit and came down into Mary to become flesh. Wow, Muhammad, are you in trouble? You caught it? Sarah Zidiyahu out of here. Did you understand? John is confirming John's teaching of Jesus. I'm sorry, Muhammad. Or Jesus, forgive me for calling John, calling Muhammad John. Muhammad is confirming John's teaching in his gospel about Jesus as the word. But wait, I thought this is the gospel that Muslims tell me is less reliable because it's later in time and more theologically developed. Then why is Muhammad parroting John's teaching of Jesus as the word? Because John is the only gospel writer that says that. Are you with me there? So if Jesus is God's word that came down to Mary, that means he was up there with God before he came down. But if he was up there before God, with God before he came down, he wasn't flesh because he only took flesh when he came out of Mary's womb, her blessed womb. So what would he have been there? The Quran tells you, a spirit from him. Jesus was a spirit who existed with God as his word and came down as a spirit to become flesh. Wow, Muhammad, you just confirmed the incarnation, the word in flesh, logos and sarks, logos in the flesh, without even realizing what you did. Without even realizing what you did, Muhammad. And you see Satan moving Muhammad to say, yeah, Muhammad, say to them, Jesus is the word. Say to them, he's the word who came down to Mary. Say to them, he's a spirit from God. Just say that so you can deceive them into following you. And God says, exactly, Satan. Go ahead and inspire him to say these things because in my almightiness, I'm going to use that to bring them to the true Jesus and escape your snares and this false prophet. What a mighty God we serve. You caught it? What a mighty God we serve. You see what God did? God is almighty over the things of the devil. He's almighty over the Quran. Almighty over secularism, atheism, agnosticism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and all viruses. He's almighty. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahovah, the true God, the God of the Bible. Now, I'm going to prove to you that the Quran is saying Jesus was up there with God before he came down to Mary. You want the proof? You want me to give you further proof of that? That the Quran is agreeing Jesus was up there. His origin is with God, up there with God, and not from the earth, not from the dust. Here, let me prove it to you. Chapter 4, verse 158 of the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 158 of the Quran.
Yeah, Eddie, but he even didn't even change his tone. In other words, he kept saying Jesus is the word and the spirit of the Messiah. And yet didn't realize by still saying that, he buried himself and exposed himself for what he was. Now notice what it says about Jesus, folks. Notice what it says about Jesus. Allah took him, Jesus, up unto himself. Allah took him, took Jesus up unto himself. Allah was ever mighty and wise. Now notice chapter 3, verse 55. Chapter 3, verse 55. Chapter 3, verse 55. Watch here. Chapter 3, verse 55. Behold, Allah said, O Jesus, I will take thee and raise thee to myself and clear thee of the falsehood of those who blaspheme. I will make those who follow thee superior to those who reject faith to the day of resurrection. Then shall ye all return unto me, and I will judge between you of the matters wherein ye dispute. Did you catch it? Allah says to Jesus, I'm going to take you to myself. Notice what he didn't say. Jesus, I'm going to take you to the second heaven. I'm going to take you to myself. So where I am, there you'll be. Everyone else, all other human prophets and messengers died. Do you know why? Because their origin is from Adam. Adam's from the dust, and they return to the dust. But because Jesus is not from Adam, from the dust, but from God, he returned to the source he came from. We return to the dust because that's our source. Jesus returned to his source. Since he's not from the dust, but from God, he returned back to God. And that's what the Quran just said. That's what the Quran just said. So you, you don't you ask the Muslims? Say, Muslims, where is Allah? Say, where is Allah? They'll say he's above creation, above the throne. You just place Jesus above creation. You place Jesus with Allah on his throne. What do you mean? Your Quran says Allah took Jesus to himself. So the Quran affirms the physical ascension of Jesus to God. In those two verses. So he came from God. He went back to God from which he came. He came from God, and he went back to God from which he came. Muhammad, being from the dust, went back to the dust. Chapter 39, verse 30. What does it say about Muhammad? Chapter 39, verse 30. What does it say about Muhammad? Okay. Watch here. Truly thou will die one day, Muhammad. And truly, they too will die one day. So Muhammad says, is, is told, you're going to die, Muhammad. They will too. Jesus, you came from me. You're coming back to me. You came down from me, out of me to Mary. You're coming back to me. So notice what the Quran confirms. The Quran confirms Jesus came out of God as his word, as his spirit, entered Mary, became flesh, and went back to God as flesh. He came as spirit, went back as flesh. That's exactly what the Bible teaches. That's exactly what the Bible teaches. You know, stop posting 349 when we already posted it. Pay attention to the discussion. I want it to sink in before I move any further. Are you catching this? Now, I've done this session previously, <clears throat> and I've written articles on this, but it seems like we got to hear it over and over again be until it becomes second nature, so you can start using this. So what part of 4171 do we disagree with? Nothing. I agree with it. Ah, oh, but it says God is one. You disagree with that. Who told you? I agree God is one. What are you talking about? He is one. Ah, oh, but you believe he has a son, and the, the verse says... Allah's far above having a son. I agree with that too, because let's go to 4171. Let me explain to you what Muhammad thought having a son meant. 4171. 4171. Almost done with this session. And Lord willing, we're going to do a part three on this. But 4171. All people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion, nor utter 
Ought concerning Allah, save the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary and a spirit from him. So believe in Allah and his messenger. Say not three. Notice, say not three. Seize, it is better for you. Allah is only one Allah. Far is it removed from his transcendent majesty that he should have a son. Now let me explain what the Quran means. Stop saying three gods, Allah, Mary, and Jesus, and Jesus is their offspring. And we agree. We don't believe in that, and we don't believe that Jesus is the offspring of Allah and Mary having a sexual union. So we agree with this verse. Jesus is not God's son in that sense. And we don't agree there are three gods. How do I know that when the Quran says, say not three, it means do not say three gods? <clears throat> Can I give you the proof? Can I give you the proof? That when the Quran says to so-called Christians, do not say three, it means three gods, Allah, Mary, and Jesus. And when it says he's up far above having a son, it means having a son through sexual intercourse, all of which we condemn too as lies of the devil. Let me prove it to you. Chapter 5, verses 73 to 75. Chapter 5, verses 73 to 75. Hope I didn't bore you with this session. Watch here. They surely disbelieve who say Allah. Lo, Allah is the third of three. Pay attention. What is third of three? When there is no Allah, save the one Allah. If they desist not from say, so saying, a painful doom will fall on those of them who disbelieve. Now pay attention. Will they not rather turn to unto Allah, uh, unto Allah and seek forgiveness of him? <clears throat> For Allah is forgiving, merciful. Now here's the key. Here's why it says do not say three. Verse 75, the Messiah, son of Mary, was no other than a messenger, messengers the like of whom had passed away before him, and his mother was a saintly woman. They both used to eat earthly food. See how we make the revelations clear for them and see how they are turned away? See, this is the three. Stop saying three gods. Jesus and Mary ate food, so they're not gods. Allah and Mary and Jesus are not three gods. Stop saying that. And we're scratching in the head and saying, who says that? Mary's not a god or a goddess. And Jesus isn't a god apart from God. Jesus is flesh, who's the eternal word of God, one with him, not separate from him. So Muhammad, what are you talking about? Chapter 5, verse 116, further proof. Chapter 5, verse 116, further proof. Chapter 5, verse 116. Further proof. And when Allah saith, O Jesus, son of Mary, didst thou say unto mankind, Take me and my mother for two gods beside Allah? Take me and my mother as two gods beside Allah. There's your three. And we agree with the Quran. We don't say three, Muhammad. We condemn that three, Muhammad. And we don't say God has a son in the sense you think. So what exactly are you disagreeing with? What exactly are you objecting to? Because everything you say, we don't believe. And he said, be glorified. <clears throat> it was not mine to utter that to which I had no right. If I used to say it, then thou knowest, knowest it. Thou knowest what is in my mind, my soul, nafsi. And I know not what is in thy soul, mine. Lo, thou, only thou art the knower of things hidden. So guys, what part of 4171 do you reject? I don't say three. I don't believe Allah has a son in the way you think. Mary's not a God alongside Jesus as two gods with Allah. We don't believe that. We don't believe Jesus is a God separate from Allah, meaning God, not your Allah Muhammad. Jesus is the eternal word of God. It's separate from, from him, one with him who became flesh. And you didn't you just say that? He's God's word that came down into Mary and he became flesh. So you just agreed with me. Where is the disagreement, Muhammad? Where are you condemning my belief, Muhammad? Where are you opposing what I believe, Muhammad? You catch it? And then you challenge the Muslims. Say, I challenge you. Show me where the Quran says they are disbelievers who say, Allah is Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. 
Show me in the Quran where it says they are blasphemers, unbelievers who say Allah and his word and his spirit are one. Show me where the Quran says they are disbelievers who say Jesus is the word of Allah who became flesh. Show me where it says they are disbelievers who say the Holy Spirit is one with Allah. Then you'd be attacking my belief. Then you'd be attacking my belief. Why is Allah so busy attacking the belief of some group that no one knows who they are, but ignored the belief of the Christian <clears throat> community as a whole? At the time of Muhammad, the so-called Nestorians, the Miaphysites, the Coptics, the Roman Catholics, Orthodox, all agreed on the Trinity being Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All agreed on Jesus being the eternal word who became flesh, born of the Virgin Mary, God's son in that sense, not in the sense you think, Muhammad. So Allah didn't think it was worth his time or important to condemn the belief of Christianity as a whole, the whole of Christendom. But he spent time attacking the belief of some group. We don't know who, if they existed. Really? Really? Right? Is it sinking in? Did it make sense now? So folks, do you see what the true shahada is? The true shahada? The true shahada is to say there is no God but Allah. Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. That we reject. And Jesus is his slave, his messenger apostle, the son of his slave servant, the son of Mary. His word, which he cast down to Mary, and a spirit from him that came into her. In other words, Muslims must confess Jesus is the eternal, uncreated word of God who came as a spirit, became flesh. They must affirm the word of God became flesh, the incarnation taught in the gospel of John. That's what must they must confirm to be true Muslims. Does that sink in? I'm going to do a part three and unpack their objections against Jesus being the word. But I just want to focus on this. Did everyone get it? So the Quran confirms Jesus is the eternal word that came down as a spirit to become flesh from his blessed mother while she was a virgin. And then Jesus returned as flesh physically to, to God. And Jesus, because he's a life-giving spirit who became flesh, breathed life into clay objects, made them alive, and raised the dead, gave life to the dead. And you're trying to convince me Jesus isn't God in the flesh. You're trying to convince me Jesus isn't God in the flesh. Hmm? I'm convinced. I am convinced. Since it's only 93 minutes, I'm going to open up to Q&A. I want to give you a chance to ask questions, and my Skype is open. So here's the chance to ask me questions on any topic. Here you go. Benny Malik 3. So hope you, you're blessed. Now you can ask me questions on this or other topics. Come on. Use the time. If not, I'll shut down because I don't want to go too much. God willing, Lord willing, tomorrow, I got I to gotta finish the second part of Joe's Witnesses, and I'll do another session on being born again if you're interested. If you're interested on being born again. So tomorrow I'm going to finish the second part of those objections of the Joe's Witnesses for the benefit of that brother, God willing, Lord Jesus willing. And I'll do another session on being born again because I didn't finish the series. Any questions? Lord willing, tomorrow Saturday. So you're quarantined. You can't go anywhere. Lord willing, the first session should be around... 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. That's Sunday, God willing. That's not Saturday. It's Sunday. Okay, what is it, Thomas Hughes? So you want to ask me in the text, not call in? That's fine. Go ahead. What's your question? What's your question? Yep. He is pure. He's holy. He's faultless. I already did. I did a series on Satan. 
whether he's Lucifer or what. It's on my YouTube session. So look look through it. But if maybe eventually I'll go a little more deeper. But yeah, I've done some on that. So Thomas, you, I'm waiting for your question. I, Aisha's bone? You mean Ali, Elisha? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the significance is apart from that God honors the remains of his prophets. He honors even the bones of his prophets. This is to show the dignity and honor that Elisha has had, that even his bones were blessed by God and had healing power. But are you asking me something more specific? You're, you're referring to 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 to 21. So I, beyond that, are you asking something more specific? Thomas, you forgot your question, bro? If not, then we'll be done. No other questions? Anybody? Going once, guys. Going to because I don't want to have long period of silence. Yes, God honors the remains of his prophets, apostles, his holy men, holy women of God. So he uses their bones. He uses their bodies. He uses their perspiration. He uses their handkerchief to communicate blessing and healing, right? Because this shows their status before God. And it also shows that God will use means. He'll use what's known as instrumental means, meaning he'll use created elements. He'll use water. He'll use mud. He'll use, <clears throat> you know, you name it, he'll use. He'll use it for his glory. If he created it, he can use it to bring about miracles and healing, especially the artifacts of his holy men and women who are filled with the spirit that glorify Jesus Christ. Okay, what's the question? What about 1 Corinthians 5.17? There is no 1 Corinthians 5.17, Thomas, you. 1 Corinthians 5 ends at verse 13. There is no 17 in 1 Corinthians 5. Right? There is no 1 Corinthians 5.17. There is no 1 Corinthians 5.17. So I don't know what you're talking about. By the way, as you're doing that, I forgot to share something with you. I forgot to mention this, and it's important as you guys ask the questions because I don't want no lag time. Who's a freak? You're calling me a freak, Cloudy? Why? I have no idea what you're talking about, Eddie. God telling him it wasn't Elisha? I don't know what you're smoking. It was Elisha. 2 Kings 13, 20 to 21. 2 Kings 13, 20, 21. So, Eddie, put down the pipe, brother. Let the Bible speak. Don't make the Bible agree with your teaching. Okay, let's go to 2 Kings 13, 20 to 21. 2 Kings 13, 20 to 21. Okay, 2 Kings 13, 20 to 21. And Elisha died, and they buried him, and the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood upon his feet. Yeah, look, if that's what you meant, Eddie, of course. I didn't understand what you're saying. Yeah, that Elisha was dead, so the power couldn't come from him. The power comes from God. But notice, God's power is mediated through what we call instrumental causes. God's power is mediated through created elements that he created that he can use and sanctify for his glory, right? So here are the bones of Elisha, and God is now communicating his power to give life through the bones. So it is not unbiblical to believe that God can bring about healing, bring about restoration, do a miracle through the artifacts, the remains, of men and women that God has used mightily for the glory of Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit. You have a biblical basis for it. So then when they tell me, for example, oil is dripping from the body of Marsharbil, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. God can do that. I have no problem. Let me give you another example. Acts 19, 11 to 12. Acts 19, 11 to 12. And I'm going to answer Thomas Yeo's question. Thomas Yeo mentioned 1 Corinthians 7, 12, 
where Paul says, I, not the Lord, I give you a command, I, not the Lord. I'll explain what that means. No, 47, that's not what it says. I already refuted that. 47, that's Judges 1, 19. It did not say God couldn't do it. It's referring to Judah, the tribe of Judah, that God did not allow him to do it for reasons. So don't misquote it. That's an Ahmed Didat argument. Acts 19, 11 to 12. Read this, guys. Read this. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body, his body were brought unto the sick, hand, handkerchiefs that he used, aprons that touched his body, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So what do you learn in the Bible? God will use his created elements. He'll use mud. He'll use water. He'll use handkerchiefs. He'll use aprons. He'll use bones. He'll use poultrous. He'll use any created mean to bring about a healing, a miracle, because God is showing you he works through his creation, not apart from it. He will use creation to bring about healing, miracles, and his will. You with me there? Jesus even put mud on a man's eyes to give him sight. And he told the man to go into the pool of Siloam. And he came back seeing. John 9, right? Everyone with me there? Are you getting it? Or you? So it is not biblical to say God can't use artifacts. Yes, he can. And he does. Same God yesterday, today, and forever. I don't believe miracles have stopped. <clears throat> but I test every miracle night of the Bible. I test every miracle in light of the scriptures. So if someone tells me there's this amazing holy man of God, a Trinitarian who worshiped the Trinity, believed the Bible's God's word, and he lived in 500 AD, and he did miracles, and his body's preserved, and oh, amen, why would I disagree with him? That doesn't increase my faith because my faith is anchored in scripture, right? And I'm not surprised that happens because the Bible is true and that, that stuff happens. But anyway, you get my point. Right, now, let's go to Thomas Hughes' question. 1 Corinthians 7, 12. Thomas Hughes' question. It's 1 Corinthians 7, 12. Is it good? Is it going to make me some money, Tony? If not, then I don't got time. I need some skill up. All right, 1 Corinthians 7, 12. How do we answer the fact that Paul says, this command is not from the Lord? This command is not from the Lord. That's what Thomas Hughes is asking me. But to the rest, speak I, not the Lord. See, I'm telling you, not the Lord. The Lord is not telling you this command. I'm giving you this command. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So now what's your specific objection, Thomas Hughes? I've already written responses to this, and I've done sessions on this. But I want to hear what your specific objection is so I can address it thoroughly. What is your objection? <clears throat> Earlier we had about 160. Today we couldn't even go over 80. Is that because CP is on? I'm going to have them banned from YouTube. Okay, then I can't talk to you. Thomas, what's your objection? Why is it not regarded as scripture, Thomas? What's the problem? How can this be inspired scripture if it's not from the Lord? That's what he's asking me. Why is it not inspired scripture? I know the argument, but I want you to articulate it for me. Why is this not inspired scripture? Because the command he gives is not from God? Is that what Paul said? So if it's not from God, it can't be scripture? No, Thomas. This is where you don't read carefully. Paul is speaking about believers married to unbelievers. Did Jesus ever address that while he was on earth? When Jesus was on earth, did Jesus ever address the issue of believers married to unbelievers and what should be done? Are you with me there? Okay. But you didn't read 10 to 11. This is what surprised me. Why did you start at 12, but you didn't read 10 to 11? Now let's read 1 Corinthians 7, 10 to 12 to tell you what Paul did not mean. It all comes to context. And one thing that really disturbs me, I'm not saying you, Thomas. I'm saying generally. 
Christians, for the life of me, don't know how to read context. And I don't know why. 1 Corinthians 7 didn't start at 12. It started at 1. Now let's read 10 to 12. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But And if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let, and let not the husband, let not the husband put away his wife. Now here's the context. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth, not an unbelieving wife, she be ple pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Where's the problem, Thomas? In verses 10 to 11, he says, Jesus gave a command regarding believers who are married. But in the issue of a believer married to an unbeliever, Jesus never talked about it while he's on earth. So I'm going to tell you. But Paul, are you going to tell us without being inspired? No. Who told you that? But that's what Thomas, you told me. Because you said not the Lord. I mean, no. I'm saying the Lord on earth did address this issue. But when the Lord was on earth, he addressed the issue of believers being married. So now he left it to me to address an issue that he himself did not directly address while he's on earth. Right? 1 Corinthians 7, 25, to prove my point. 1 Corinthians 7, 25, to prove my point. Because here he addresses another issue that Jesus didn't address. 1 Corinthians 7, 25. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord. When the Lord was on earth and he taught the disciples, he never addressed what to do with your virgin daughters. Should you marry them or should you keep them virgins? But now notice what he says. Yet I give my judgment. Why? As one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. So though he didn't address it, I'll address it because the Lord has given me mercy, counting me. His his servant to address ses, such issues on his behalf. Why? Because let's go to 1 Corinthians 7, 39 to 40. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 39 to 40. Let's see the context. That's what kills me. Christians are not reading context. I don't know why. 1 Corinthians 7, 39 to 40. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. So she can marry someone, but he's got to be in Christ. He's got to be a believer. So a Christian can't marry a Muslim. You marry only someone who loves Jesus. Now notice the sarcasm here. People don't understand that Paul at times is sarcastic. He's making fun. But she is happier if she so abide, meaning she would be better off if she remained unmarried, according to my judgment, and I think also that I have the Spirit of God. Now, is Paul saying, yeah, I think I have the Spirit, but I'm not certain? Or is he mocking, saying, hey, you know, I think I have the Spirit too, you know? Is he doubting as a Spirit, or is he mocking to those he's writing to who thought they're spiritual and Paul wasn't? You know, guys, I think I have the Spirit too, you know? Or is he saying, yeah, I may have the Spirit, I may not? Is, Jesus, is Paul being sarcastic, or is Paul... Doubting whether he has the spirit to talk about such issues not addressed by Christ. You don't need to guess. Go to 1 Corinthians 2.13. 1 Corinthians 2.13. He's being sarcastic. 1 Corinthians 2.13. Watch here. He's being sarcastic. Yeah, if you want to call me, call me before I shut down. Notice what Paul says, Thomas Yo, in 1 Corinthians 2.13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, crush the buffering in Jesus' name. Man, this gets me angry. 1 Corinthians 2.13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So Paul already told you in 1 Corinthians 2, the wisdom I'm imparting to you, the instructions I'm giving to you, man didn't teach me. The Holy Spirit gave me the wisdom to teach those who are spiritual, born of the Spirit. So Paul is being sarcastic. Paul is saying, I judge that a widow is better off unmarried because, you know, I think I have the Spirit too, you know. You're not the only one. 
The Spirit speaks through me. The Spirit inspires me to address issues not addressed by Jesus when he's on earth. So who in the world would assume if they read context properly, Paul is denying he's inspired? Yeah, this command, I'm not inspired to. I, my opinion, That's not what he's saying. Oh, yeah, definitely had a temper cloudy. Because everywhere he went, he started riots. You don't start riots if you're like you or David Wood. All about love. Just to love people. You start riot, riots when you have a temperament like me and Christian Prince. Not Sissy Wood. I mean, David Wood. Did that answer your question, Thomas Yo? And did that answer the question of everyone else? Can I give you my article on this, Thomas Yo? What's up, yo? I wrote an article on this. Guys, you think I exaggerate when I say I have articles on this and I have articles on that. How many times have I told you, check the website, check my blog, check my YouTube channel. Chances are you'll find an article. I wrote an article on this that Paul deny he's inspired. Here you go. Here it is. Here you go. You got it. Here you go. And this is over 10 years old. I think this article is about 15 years old. See? Do you know why I have an article on this, Thomas Yeo and everyone else? Because Muslims bring up these passages, and they've been bringing it up ever since I got into apologetics and ministry. Leave your church, Freddie Coco. Freddie Coco, if your church baptized a cross-dressing man, your church is an abomination. Your pastor is of the devil, a daughter, son of Satan. Your church is not the house of God. It is a blasphemous den of demons. May God chasten, shame those filthy dogs for doing that. Leave your church. Don't stay anymore, Freddie, or God rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I say that. So you don't stay in that filthy church. Shame on that church. May God shame them for the, such a wicked, blasphemous thing. Steadfast, I have no idea what you're talking about, spiritual or otherwise. What are you talking about? What do you mean spiritual or otherwise? It's a scene in which Jesus cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And they thought he's crying out to Elijah because there's a tradition in Judaism that when a righteous servant asks for the help of Elijah, Elijah will come and help. So I don't know what you're talking about. This actually supports communion of saints, that the Jews had an understanding that you can actually invoke prophets to come to your aid because God allowed prophets to hear you and help you. So I don't know what you're talking about. Freddie, if you're going to justify, but she said, I'm going to block you. There is no justification to baptize a cross-dresser who hasn't repented. It's like saying, I'm going to baptize a pedophile or an adulterer who hasn't repented. Freddie, don't insult me. Do you want me to block you? Your pastor is a daughter of Satan, a spiritual whore. May the Lord shame her. And if you're still in your church, don't come back to my channel. Don't come back to my channel. Shame on you. Don't come back. I don't want people like this who are cowards and don't have a backbone. She's a blasphemer. All right? Sorry about that. And he's still, yeah, but she said, she said. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. Guys, I'm sorry. I get animated. How dare you do this to the church of Christ? It's not your church. It's Jesus' church. How dare you do that to the church of Christ? And hey, folks, Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, steadfast, I answered it because he would have said, Eli, Eli. Eli is a shortened form for Eli Yahu. Eli Yahu. So they thought he's calling Elijah when he said, Eli. Eli can mean my God, or Eli can be the shortened form for Eliyahu. It's like when you say Yeshua. Yeshua is the shortened form of Yehoshua. So they thought he's calling on Elijah because they had a tradition that Elijah would come to the aid of the righteous sufferer by God's permission. That's why. Steadfast. Are you with me there now? So remain steadfast.
Okay? Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. The Father lives. The Lord Jesus lives. The Holy Spirit lives. They are the one true God. And the Bible is the word of the one true God. And the Lord Jesus will return physically, bodily to judge the living and the dead. May the Lord Jesus cover us and our loved ones. My daughter in his holy blood. Seal us and our loved ones. My daughters by his spirit. Keep us in love with him. Give us the holiness to delight his heart. The health to glorify him and the provisions. Save us from our flesh, from the world, from Satan. Live for him. Love him. Worship him and die for him. Amen, Lord Jesus. Increase in us. Maranatha. Lord Jesus willing, see you tomorrow. Look for me at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Hit the like button. Get more people to view. Subscribe. Disseminate this information. Love you guys for the sake of the Lord.